a girl walked into the bar when I was getting just stone drunk again. And I looked at her and she was just beaming with energy. So I was like, well, what do I have to lose? I just walked up to this complete stranger and I said, show me how to be like that. I want to be happy. I want to feel like I see you look. And she was a little taken back, obviously, you know, a stranger coming up to her bar and asking her how to be happy. But she smiled and she said, I just came from a healer. I'd love to introduce you to him. And I said, take me to your leader. You know, <laughs> what have I got to lose? <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to all our listeners to the Changemaker podcast today with another really special guest, Jeff Palmer. And I want to tell you all about how we got in touch. It was actually really funny, <laughs> right? So I can actually show that to all of the viewers by opening a tab. So I made a post on Facebook. This is also going to be on YouTube, so people are going to see this. I made a post on Facebook, this one here, huh? Uh, question yes. to all vegan change makers how do you generate energy to advocate for veganism daily well the post blew up 87 comments everybody everybody had something great to share and at some point you too but i also saw that you were in like a, a comment section debate all of a sudden with um another vegan who kind of pointed out that veganism is not about compassion and we should really like only focus on veganizing as efficient and his input was okay but at some point you <laughs> you commented and you said um i've been an ethical vegan for the animals for 37 years i'm married to a 27 year old vegan i own a certified vegan company and created the first and only 100 percent vegan natural bodybuilding competition in the world <laughs> and you were selected top 40 of the most influential vegans in the world by plant-based news which if you don't know is one of the biggest like plant-based news distributors i'll leave the link to that in the show notes i signed up to their newsletter they're amazing so yeah you you've been like you've been creating something massive there and i want to thank you for hopping on the podcast and joining us well, my pleasure, and thanks for initiating that question because I think it's such an important question. Um, people who are heart-centered and compassionate um, care so much about the animals, myself included, and uh, and it it can be draining sometimes to be around people who um, are very resistant to it and combative, even um, and very negative. And I. I always try to stay as positive as possible um but there are certain times where i just have to say okay that's enough i'm not i'm not a doormat you know don't <laughs> don't mistake my compassion for for being a doormat um and and i will speak up and i'll voice my opinion and and of course i'll do it with consideration and politeness as long as the other parties are willing to if not there's good old delete block function in facebook <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's another option. I think many of us forget when we're dealing with, let's call them the trolls in our vegan community, <laughs> the ones that are just blaming and shaming each other for, for doing it differently or mm -hmm. advocating differently. And there's a delete button. Yeah, you, you can click that button. You can click a block button. You can <laughs> yeah. click a delete button. All those options are available, right? So I, I would love to ask you a little bit like, as you've been growing into this really influ influential personality, which in other words, your greatest version, which I often like to refer to, I would love for you to take me and all of our listeners back to 37 years ago, which mm -hmm. is quite some time. It's quite some time, right? <laughs> 37 years ago, when you decided to go vegan, can you describe to us how it was like to be vegan that long ago yes so um 
Okay, so let's let's start out. I, I was always a nature boy. I loved playing outside and we lived by the lake. We had woods by my house. I was just fascinated by nature. Uh, it always seemed to balance itself. It always seemed to be in harmony. The weeds never grew where there was too much shade. The, you know, it's just this this organic symphony dance of of nature. I was just fascinated by it. But to me, the human population seemed to just not pay attention to any of that harmony, to any of that diversity and respect. And, and the dance was not there. It was conquering. It was power over instead of power with. And, you know, I, I felt like, oh, my God, you know, is, is this world the right place for me? Um, I... Uh, lost my father at 18 to alcohol. I lost my mother um, a few years later. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I lost my brother to paranoid schizophrenia. I was born in a very high IQ family and a very heart-centered family. And those two things made it very tough and very alienated from society to begin with. One being a male and heart-centered, wasn't accepted amongst my peers uh being you know getting straight a's i was getting mocked and made fun of oh you're the brainy kid and nobody wants to hang with me and so i intentionally just started getting bad grades so i can fit in i started just trying to be like them and it was just so not me that i was like do i really belong here is this is this the, really the right place for me and having lost my family unit all my my siblings my brother my father my mother it was just the world was collapsing in on me and um i sank into suicidal depression and uh, attempted to take my life twice and failed fortunately both times but the depression was so intense i was walking in emotional and mental pain all the time. I couldn't take it. And I was doing all the drugs, I was drinking, I was smoking, I was doing all of it and just nothing would numb it anymore. And a girl walked into the bar when I was getting just stone drunk again. And I looked at her and she was just beaming with energy. So I was like, well, what do I have to lose? I just walked up to this complete stranger and I said, Show me how to be like that. I want to be happy. I want to feel like I see you look. And she was a little taken back, obviously, you know, a stranger coming up to her bar and asking her how to be happy. But she smiled and she said, I just came from a healer. I'd love to introduce you to him. And I said, take me to your leader, you know, <laughs> what have I got to lose? And of course, being a very intellectual person and cynical at the same time, feeling like this world is just not for me. Uh, I went there with a lot of skepticism, but I got to the door. The guy opened the door and he stopped and just looked straight into my eyes and said, oh, you came here to prove me wrong. And I'd never felt so naked before in my life. He saw me. Not the person I was putting on, not the person I wanted me people to think I was. He saw me. So I said, what the hell? Let's do this. I'll, I'll let my guard down. What have I got to lose? I'm ready to take my own life anyway, and this time for, for good. He sat me in, and we just started talking about nothing. And he said, it's your father. My heart sank. I'd lost my father just a couple of years before from alcohol. And I had so much love and so much anger for him for abandoning me at 18 years of age when I needed him most, when I needed a father figure for guidance, when I was struggling with a world I couldn't comprehend why it was the way it was. And he said, do this for me. He goes, just repeat this phrase. I created the separation between myself and my father, and then tell me what that is. And every time I would say something that he did, and he goes, no, that's what he did. Tell me what you did to create that separation. 
And as I kept doing this over and over, using the excuses, using the anger at him, at what he did, and getting it back, he forced me back to ownership of that. And my heart just broke. And the tears just poured down my face. And I saw in him the same person who took alcohol all the way to the grave because he didn't understand what I was going through and he didn't have an answer for me either. In that, I found so much forgiveness. <laughs> my heart just opened up and I forgave myself. I forgave my father. I saw him. Now I could empathize with him, not be angry at him, but I felt his pain. And I said, oh my God, I get to release this pain. That pain had gotten me so closed off. I had shut down my ability to love, to love my father, to love anybody else, to love myself, to love God. I shut it all down because of my anger. And when I did release that, oh my God, the connection with everything. My brain felt like it was on fire. My hands were so humming with electricity. It was like they were plugged into light sockets. I was just vibrating from the amount of energy that was released and flowing through me. I started seeing auras on everything instantly, the plants, the everything, the light fixtures all had these amazing golden auras. I was like, oh my God, what's happening to me? And I just felt so energized, I couldn't sleep. So I stayed up all night meditating. And I looked out the window as the sun was rising and I felt that rise inside of me. And I said, I do not want to cause harm anymore. I know that suffering. I don't want to contribute that. And my higher voice said, great, stop eating animals. And right in that moment, I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I quit eating all animal products and quit doing all drugs, everything, 37 years ago, March 15th, 1985. That day, I was born again. A born again vegan, that's what I call it. But I reconnected to that ability to love everything, love the animals, love nature, love myself, love other people. My worldview turned 360. I realized I didn't come here to get something from this world. I came here because I have something to give this world. And that was the blessing I needed. That was the empowerment that I needed to say, now I'm in the right place. What is, what is the best thing for someone who has a lot of love to give? Go to some place where it's needed. And boy, does this world need lots of love. Ooh, uh -huh. wow. So that was the turning point for me. And yes, it was weird because I didn't even know the word vegan back then. Somebody told me about a year after I was practicing it. I just calling myself a, a, an exclusive vegetarian because I didn't even know the word vegan. Uh, no books, no movies out back in 1985. There was no internet yet for the general public. So no social media, no digital phones. No, none of that. But I knew in my heart of hearts, it was right. Now, I was raised as an intellectual. I was, at a, you know, I was finishing my degree in biology and I was looking at all the physiology and I was like, well, wait a minute. If I know in my heart of hearts, this is right then there's got to be scientific evidence that shows this is right on other levels as well. So I said, all right, that's what I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna start looking for proof that this is that. And I've spent the last 35 years of my life uncovering all, every single study I could read. My wife kids me all the time. She's like, are you staying up reading studies again? I'm like, I've got a good one. <laughs> this one shows we don't need this. We don't need animals. We don't need all that stuff that we're consuming. And it's been a joy. I not only committed in that day on March 15th to living this lifestyle for the animals, for the environment, for others, but I committed the rest of my life to helping other people. And 
that's been the joy of my life. So I've been looking all my life for ways at which I can be a better person to be a better example of what it is to be vegan. And one of those ways I've found, especially with men, is obviously where do you get your protein, right? The big concern that you're gonna be somehow wimpy and undernourished, right? And you know, here I am, 17 uh -huh. inch gun, a 60 year old male with 17 inch guns, 100% drug free for 37 years. And it can be done that masculinity needs to be redefined in this age. Eating meat is not masculine if it's killing you, if it's causing diseases so you cannot provide for your family and your loved ones. You are not uh, in a place to defend and protect those who care about you if you're sick and meat is killing men. And that's not masculine. It's not. There is strength in compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is connecting with others and being there to protect them, protect the weak, right? We see the masculine roles, policemen. What is that? Serve and protect, right? That's what we can do. Military, serve and protect, defend the weak, defend the innocent. Animals are innocent. These are masculine traits to be vegan. And I just want to show people that there is a different path forward. You do not have to go down to the path of eating animals, getting the diseases, taking the drugs, and dying miserably way too early. You don't have to. Sorry for the long-winded answer, but <laughs> that's how it all began back in 37 years ago. Well, that was a very powerful, long-winded answer. Wow. And I remember you sent me also a message like you've read through my bio and we know we can relate to certain things because <laughs> I'm familiar with suicidal depression and I'm familiar with like losing a father figure in life. He didn't die. He didn't die physically, but that's another story. And like, I love that you speak into redefining masculinity because for me as a queer man, um, it, it's a it's a big story as well and still I identify as a male and I am very in touch with my masculine side as well. And like redefining how powerful it is, as you just said so nicely, to live compassionate and truly caring for the weak and the strong around us, or whatever, wherever they are, that is true masculine force that we're building. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're doing that on such a deep heart-centered level and then it manifests in your physicality. Like, look at you, you are ripped as fuck. It's so beautiful to, to see this living proof of, of, you know, I am the answer to the question, can I? And I'm not the only one. And I'm bringing these people together as you do so nicely, as we both do so nicely. One more thing that I picked up on before I have another question for you, which is like burning on my mind right now. <laughs> Um, as you as you took us on this deep journey, thank you so much, by the way. That was really fucking vulnerable, which is masculine as well, by the way, darlings, to you listening. It's very masculine to be vulnerable. And you took us to this place where you reinvented yourself, basically, and you went to a healer. You seeked guidance, not from a place of I need guidance now, but you were like, what the heck? What do I have to lose, you know? Like, and this, mm -hmm. this curiosity out of either desperation or actual curiosity, doesn't matter. I want to highlight that again, because I see so many vegans and non-vegans as I move through this world with, with the eyes of me as who I am and the eyes of a coach and a guide to people. And I see so many repeat these suffering patterns because they blame and shame others. And not only is that in our vegan family, in our vegan community, it's blaming the family, blaming the parents, blaming the siblings, blaming job, blaming work for how it is. And you said it in the best words ever, reclaiming the responsibility for, for your own health, mm -hmm. well-being, for your own journey. And I just want to highlight that again. So everybody who's listening and who feels like you're, you're not exactly on the path that you want to be, 
and I know most of our listeners are vegans, so you're already on a big, big, you know, field of the path of compassion. Yeah, be honest with yourself and ask also what other parts of you are in you healing. Because the more you heal yourself, the more impactful you become for our dear animal family in the world and, and all of our loved ones. That's what I believe. So just wanted to highlight that again. And um, yeah, amen. And the question that I'm having is like, as you were redefining yourself and as you were finding this this strength as you moved along and you became vegan even before knowing that this was called vegan right it was just a natural choice i know that a lot of vegans out there think they have to know everything about veganism to convince somebody to become vegan and i disagree strongly i always say your story is your superpower so if you've become vegan you have everything in you you need to know to tell somebody to help them become vegan as well period now how did it start for you to develop this 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 it, it's kind of, i i'm tempted to call it a, a universe you basically call <laughs> cost it like a, a space into our world where people come together um and celebrate passion and compassion and d demonstrate how possible it is to be on a plant-based on a vegan on a compassionate heart-centered diet live that vision and be healthy ripped fit so take us back to how 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 this this whole thing started for you how how did it start for you how did you start um creating these these natural vegan bodybuilding competitions that's what i want to know <laughs> so um i uh after this heart and mind opening and really feeling like i stepped into my true self that was nearly i felt almost like a walking zombie for so much of my life you know that i had this amazing connection but I had this other world that was just chipping away at me on the outside. And, and, but when I turned that around to an empowered situation, I mean, where does a doctor go? A doctor goes to a hospital, right? Because that's where all the sick people are, because that's where he or she can do the most good. And I'm like, okay, I am in the right place. I just have to keep reminding myself, this is where I belong to be able to help others. If you really want to help, then go to the place where the help is needed, right? Is it challenging? Yes. Talk to any nurse that was on the battlefield. Is it challenging? But is it rewarding? 100%. And the rewards you get. Like, once I started helping people with nutrition and finding some of these facts that I could do this, a guy came in. I was working at a, a vitamin for the largest vitamin company in the country. And I was working in the, one of the retail units and they, a guy came in and said, look, do you have anything? Uh, I have kidney cancer and they're gonna remove my kidneys and I'll be on dialysis the rest of my life. And they said, I'll probably only live 10 to 15 years longer. He says, I'm too young for this. Can you help me? Is there anything? And I said, I've just been reading some research about IP6, something it's a really cool chemical that can actually reverse cancer cells. And it's found in all plants, uh, in phytate-bound iron uh, in plants. And I'm like, but when higher doses, it could do some amazing things. So I, in supplements, you can't, you're not allowed to say anything too medical. So I uh, connected him with the medical doctors. I didn't see him for months. And I thought, oh, he probably didn't make it. He came in and he saw my face and his eyes just started welling up. And he ran over and he says, do you mind if I hug you? <laughs> I said, no, what happened? He goes, it's gone. It's completely gone. And when you have that kind of power to make that kind of impact, and can share that kind of information that could have such an impact only in him, his wife, his children, who thought they were gonna lose him. That's everything to me. 
you know, people say, oh, you're in supplements to make money. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> there are some incredible plants out there that are healing people, that are making a difference in people's health and their lives. I want to bring that to the world. I want to read the studies, find those plants, put them in forms that people can have access to because it's not, they're not plants in our dietary intake. You know, we have 600,000 edible plants on this planet and we eat about 20 or 30 of them and on a daily basis. Plants have these healing powers. 60% of all drugs originated in plants, all the healing properties. We have this ability now to go out and find these, test these plants or bring them to people. So when I saw this and said, I can really improve lives by bringing plants that nobody else would bring to. I, ahi flower is this amazing plant that's the highest in omega-3s. I was the first to bring it to market. It won the best supplement of the year, the top supplement award in the United States. I took it to the top retailer and I said, this is clinically proven four times more effective than anything you have on your shelf. He goes, we're not going to take it. And I'm like, why? And he goes, well, you have a study showing it's four times better than the rest of our products won't sell. And I'm like, you're going to not sell something that's four times clinically proven four times better for all of your customers because of profits for you? Yep. And I said, okay, that's your game. I'm going to take it straight to the public. I'm going to start doing live videos every week and tell people about the magic of these plants, the health benefits. So I do. I do a weekly podcast on all the basic research that is coming out and let people empower themselves. You can make an empowered decision for your life, for your health, for your families, for people who love you and care about you and want you to stay here because they love who you are. Yeah, I want to help those people. That's what makes this adventure so much fun. It's hard work. It's hard because my business is nowhere successful near. It could be if I was just selling regular crap like everybody else. I sell the cutting edge. People don't know what it is. They've never heard of it. People don't know about the science or can't understand it. So my sales are small, but I don't care. It's the best out there. Mm. And I'm going to keep explaining it until the world does know. Oh my God. Again, I can really so it's much. It's not about yes. money for me, it's about helping people. <laughs> and That's as what long it's as really I was working about. for another company, it was always about the money. Yeah. I would suggest things. I was developer for some of the top brands in the United States, and I would bring some of these incredible, and they would say, no, it's not going to make money. And I'm like, but this could save people's lives. I found this cactus flower, the most effective, more effective, is actually developed by a pharmaceutical company, more effective than anything else at reducing the risk of prostate cancer, 80% reduction in three months. And that was the clinical trial done by the pharmaceutical company. Here's the thing though, when they did that, they said, okay, now let's find the single chemical, right? that we can patent and turn into a drug and make a billion dollars off of it. Well, when they studied the plant, they found it had a synergistic effect. It was about four or five different chemicals working together. They can't patent that. So what they did is they actually took all this research and buried it in the archives of the University of Israel so no one would ever see it. No male would be able to see that they could save their own lives Prostate cancer is one of the fastest growing cancer killers of men in the United States. Up to one in five men will have prostate cancer in their lifetime. And this is an inexpensive herb that is more effective than the top pharmaceuticals, discovered by a pharmaceutical company, tested by a pharmaceutical company, and they intentionally kept it out of the public domain so they could continue to profit off their drugs. This kind of stuff just infuriates me, but it gives me more fire <laughs> to want to do what I want to do, to cut through this and give this information to people 
so they can do it. It's got to be a movement of the people, for the people, and by the people. Because the companies out there that are just profit-driven are not going to do this. <laughs> Never. No. No. Wow. And, like, I can relate so much to, as you say, like, have this fire that can be it can be sourced in a certain sense of anger and frustration, but then also it can be transmuted. And I think that's that's the game we really got to learn how to play as as the change makers we are in this world. And as like the life saving and not only life saving, but like the truly transformative wisdom we carry, we've, we've gifted ourselves with to learn. Now, when we go into these places of anger and we transmute that into a motivation, as you say, you go live every week, you want those people to know out there because they just deserve it. And even if they're not consciously asking for it, subconsciously, they're asking for it. Everybody is asking to be more healthy. And if you think, oh my God, I'm the healthiest. No, 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 no. There's, there's another layer, you know, there's another layer to heal, honey. Have you been 200 years on this world? Probably not yet. So <laughs> let's keep healing, you know, and make it fun as well. Make it playful. And that's something I always love to point out is because I know it, it facing these bigger companies and mm -hmm. like not having a war with them, but actually saying, I, I'm not going to support you because the, the higher vision that I have is to actually heal people instead of making money. And how do you, like, when you find yourself dropping into that anger, which we know is a very consuming emotion, like mm -hmm. it, it, anger usually shuts us down if we can't transmute it and let it go again, because once the anger is set free, we'll have the motivation to work and be present. But when we're working with anger, I think we're destroying rather than creating impact in a positive direction so when you feel anger let's say in the example with with these companies like you've probably felt really pissed when they were like oh my god fuck you all how dare you how dare you not take this on your shelves like what what, what helps you to transmute that anger and to reshape it so that you as i see you can function as this really impactful human being how do you shift out of the anger yeah, and for me, so much of it, uh, whether it's the animals, you know, when I see the horror that goes on in our animal agriculture system from grinding chicks at a baby to calf euthanization for the dairy industry, it's, it's horrific. I mean, it's brutal, it's disgusting, it's barbaric. And that hurts. I feel that. They're my earthlings, my fellow earthlings, where, you know, we share this planet. We're just an animal like they are. We just think we're better and we're not. We're much worse. They live in harmony with their other animals. We do not. Uh, and so for me, that's almost always a sense of injustice. But when you know, my wife and I have this, uh, this funny thing when we're driving in the car and somebody gets a little road rage, we go, well, sending you some love. And that's what I have to keep reminding myself of when faced with anger to recognize that somebody else is struggling and come at it from that angle. You know, okay, they're in a bad place. They're in a rough place. If someone is, and I get this so many from, and I hate to generalize because I don't like generalizations in any aspect, but mostly from white males. <laughs> in our society is this diff this adamant, arrogant ignorance. And that's the toughest thing for me when it's so wrong and they know the, they're wrong and they will ignorantly say something just belligerently on top of it. And you're like, why go there? Why do that? That's not necessary. And I have to just take a step back and say, okay, they're in a bad place and leave them with something good. Try to find some sort of connection and just leave it and walk away. Planting seeds sometimes is so much more powerful than expecting a result. Just leave a seed and let it grow. I don't know how many times I've 
been faced with that with someone and then five maybe 10 years later they looked me up on social media and said i went vegan i had thought about what you said all those years ago and i'm like oh wow <laughs> Things that you just gave up on, like, oh, he's never going to change. He's going to die. He's going to go down that path of heart attack, stroke, and diabetes and death in 10, 15 years. And turning it around, you just got to trust in the process. And, and it may not happen today. It may not happen in the next few years. But everyone has the ability to change. I went from wanting to immediately cease my life, that my pain was that deep and, and hard, to I went from seeing the world as a torture place to seeing it as a playground where I get to explore what I can do, the possibilities of what I can contribute to. That excites me every day. I call it Christmas every day. I get to see what packages I open today. You know, <laughs> I was just at the gym today, and I met a woman, and she read my vegan shirt and started talking. And I told her, you know, she was eating eggs, and I said, you know, the highest in methionine, and methionine actually feeds cancer cell growth. And she goes, I did not know that. We ended up into this conversation that went on for like a half an hour, and she was nearly in tears, holding my hand, saying, "Thank you, thank you for taking the time to give me so much information." That means everything. She goes, I'm sorry for messing up your workout. I said, I can work out anytime. I don't get to share on this level with people very often. Thank you for listening. And that's the kind of stuff that I feel value. You know, we so focus on currency, right? Fiat currency, money, right? Money is a, a symbol of value. But we forget what the intrinsic value behind that is. And that's us. It's the human being. It's the love. It's the kindness. It's the gestures of help to each other. That's what that piece of paper is supposed to represent. We forget that being a kind person to another person is the original currency. Let's get back to that value system, right? <laughs> that's what I live for. When I can have moments like this in the gym, there is no amount of money that can buy that experience. <laughs> that comes from two people being open and sharing and kind to each other. And that's a powerful experience. <laughs> that's the original currency. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that, yeah. Yeah, and like, I sometimes, remember these moments when these you say it's so nice, it's like every time or every day is christmas and you can choose the like packages to open and they're everywhere they're really everywhere and i feel like when we sink into these states of sadness anger frustration uh, desperation maybe even uh, we can't even see the gifts we can't even mm -hmm. see the people in front of us that are ready to hear this <clears throat> beautiful thing that we have to share and sometimes i even like i even myself catch myself forgetting how empowering it was to become vegan and <laughs> it wasn't frustrating at all it was a, mm. such an empowering process it was so oh my god i'm marrying this version of me that i feel so much more aligned with than the version mm -hmm. i was living before and the version i was living before was a mcdonald's worker by the way so a whole <laughs> other story but like <laughs> I'm marrying this version and to be a catalyst for someone that is about to step into the, I think that's really the mindset that we really have to like meditate into our brains and beings or whatever tool, journal it into your heart. When you come from that mindset, then you can be open for such a thing as you just said, you can be open for conversation with somebody about eggs instead of being like, oh, the bitch still didn't get that the eggs are unhealthy, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's the thought that so many of us just live by. And to come from that point of like, oh, she just hasn't learned that yet. So let me take a moment to gift her with that wisdom in order to help her, her health, her people around her. Ooh and the chickens our lovely friends the chickens so there is so much more impact in seeing every possibility as a gift and 
one more thing that I want to talk about is because I know that a lot of vegans dance the dance of introvert extrovert, right? Oh, I'm an introvert. I, I can't be an activist. I'm an introvert. And or I'm an extrovert. I'm too extreme. I'm too like too like I push people away. I'm too whoa or whatever it is the excuse there is with the introvert extrovert story. Yeah, what I want to zoom in on is that each of us, I love to call it the vegan zone of brilliance. Or scratch to vegan, just the zone of brilliance. Each of us has like a unique to themselves way of creating impact in whatever way, shape, or form that is. And the invitation really is to discover this, this zone of brilliance where you light up, where your mindset stays, remains sustainably healthy, and you can keep being open for these gifts. Now, Another thing we haven't talked about and which I would love for you to talk about, because to me, that is just a massive gift that you've taken ownership over and you've put it into the world, like the bodybuilding events. And I'm getting goosebumps right now. It's so unique and yet so clear to me that it's it's just it's needed to represent that. So you're having an event coming up. I would love for you to, you just told us before we started recording that you're in the preparation process. This is like all putting into shape. You have how many square meters? It's 20,000 square feet of space and beautiful, world famous Fort Lauderdale Beach at the Broward Convention Center. So it's indoors uh, and just going to have, uh, you know, 60 different, vendors from all different lifestyles, whether it's endurance or whatever way you get healthy and fit from sexual health to uh, mental health, to uh, fasting, to whole foods, to uh, Pilates, to yoga, to uh, we have uh, a guy who's going down to uh, run the entire distance of uh, South America and set the new Guinness World Book of Records as, as a vegan on a bicycle. Uh, just, I mean, just some incredible people doing incredible things. Uh, another one of our runners is running the entire perimeter of the United States and world record time. He, he runs 60 miles a day with 30 minutes of sleep because of the energizing effects of raw foods in his diet. It's just phenomenal. He owns like 14 world records as a raw food vegan. These are just some of the incredible gifts that when we put the right food into our body, our cells change, our brain structure changes, our microbiome shifts and changes and it starts producing chemicals. Way back when I was in college in the 80s, I was studying uh, uh, neurotransmitters for because I was fascinated because of depression and I had broken free the depression. I've never had a day of depression in my life in the last 37 years. So I'm like, okay, what is going on here? So SSRIs or ser selective serotonin reuptake take inhibitors. Serotonin's a, a key neurochemical to make us happy. Well, I was looking at one of these chemicals that were found in the brains that was inhibiting serotonin. So blocking our ability to be happy. And I'm like, what is that chemical? And it was from our diet. And I looked and like, where's that chemical coming from? Because it's not found in the human body. It's released in an animal when they're slaughtered. When an animal is killed, it releases this neurochemistry that shuts down serotonin because it needs to focus on survival. It cannot allow itself happy thoughts because it is 100% dedicated, fearing for its life, that it needs to somehow figure out a way to survive. And that neurochemistry pours into all the tissues, and then we eat that chemical, and it literally blocks us from being as happy as we could be. You are taking on the pain and suffering, the biochemical pain and suffering of the animal when you consume it and it is actually preventing you from living as happy a life as you could i mean i i was studying i went i traveled to like 54 different countries all around the world to study different cultures and how they gained happiness and stuff and and when i saw this this literal translation of karma you know 
do unto others as you would have done to you when you actually take on the fear the anger the sadness of an animal chemically it does the same to you yes not identical it's a different chemical in a human being when we release it but the brain thinks it's under that level of stress and behaves that way so i'm like oh my god you know we gotta get this information out there so I was doing sweat lodges in, in Native American cultures and stuff like this. And I noticed when you get in a sweat lodge, there's this outpouring of sweat, right? So it's a physical, just outpouring and release, just this release. And then comes this wave of outpouring of emotions. And, you know, the tears can fall or the joy can just be released and the forgiveness and everything, just the emotions just you pour freely like these sweat is. And then the mind just starts flying with all these thoughts of uh, things. It's like, wow, this is amazing. But what they were doing was taking something physical and making it shift dramatically. And then the emotions would want to come with it. And then the mind would want to come with it. And even the spiritual self would, or energetic self would want to come with it. And I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. What can I do? Not everybody is going to do, you know, float tanks or, or you know, all these different practices is too foreign to them. But what is something we do on a day-to-day -day basis that I could get? And I'm like, diet. We eat three to four times a day, sometimes more. If, we, if I could get people to radically shift that diet, maybe that emotional shift, that energetic shift, that mental shift can happen too as well. And exercise. If I can get people to exercise and release all those endorphins and start that chemical process that starts burning fat and making them feel better about themselves, that, yes. So, okay, everybody's pretty much good with a little bit of exercise and a little bit of change of diet. I'm gonna start there. So I said, I'm going to form a company that focuses on plant-based nutrition. Did you see I got the the, the symbol for the, <laughs> the flower of life there? Uh, yes. Very intentional. Uh, sacred geometry with the center of it being the leaf, the green, the plant. Because plants make all of the nutrients for all herbivores and humans on the planet. All the vitamins, all the essential aminos, all the essential fats all are made by plants you know the first thing people ask is where do you get your protein and i laugh because all protein originates in plants animals do not make proteins they can take proteins and tear them apart and put them back together again but they don't make them plants can only do that they make it through photosynthesis by taking nitrogen out of the either the air or the ground and combining it to glucose and making amino acids that's how it's made all of your protein comes from plants for every animal on this planet it doesn't come from anywhere else no it doesn't <laughs> so everybody non-vegan listening now honey you can get happier by eating a vegan diet and now you know that it's not only spiritual woo woo now we know that it's scientifically proven plus you can get ripped only by plants only by plants so do the animals Oh, only by eating plants. <laughs> mm, this is gonna this is gonna be like the screenshot on the thumbnail of YouTube. <laughs> As a six-year-old drug-free male, sixty. Come on, man. There's stop with the excuses. Stop with the fear. There's a bunch of fear propaganda out there. It's I want to show you. There's no reason for this fear. It is an unfounded fear. It is a fear made by marketing companies to keep you buying their products. Yes, yes. And we all have eyes. <laughs> and even if you're blind, you can touch a body. <laughs> like, sometimes I get the question, and do you feel better? And then I'm like, look at me. Look at me. Just, just look at me. Just feel exactly. Like, <laughs> do I feel Either better? Girl. Do I feel better? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Can I surf longer? Do I have more power? Do I feel mind, like is my mind better? Yes, yes. Not only due to the diet, but a big, big factor is the diet. And I've been raw vegan and now high raw for a long time. So down that path, really believe in it. Done the research. We're not gonna open that book in this podcast episode, <laughs> but honey, on processed foods, mm or as little as possible processed foods, as natural as possible, and just vegan, period. That's that's the way to heal. That's the way to be. 
Oh my God, Jeff, how can like people that want to learn more from you or work with you or join the event, where can they get in touch with you? So the it's called the Vegan Health and Fitness Expo. So you can go to vhfexpo.com. So that's the Vegan Health and Expo. And the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship will be at the event. So it's a combined event. So if you're not into bodybuilding, that's fine. But you can look on stage and see what, you know, hopefully around 100 different vegan bodybuilders from all around the world, men and women, can do with their bodies without the use of drugs. This is a drug tested event. So there'll be 100% drug fee and 100% vegan athletes on stage to show you what can be accomplished. That's just to set an example, but there's gonna be all kinds of things going on like yoga and Pilates and everything else, endurance athletes. So whatever form of exercise, health and fitness that you're into, we hope to have some representation there for including ecstatic dance, so let music, let food, let fun, let all of it be part of uh, part of your body's overall health. If you want to check out our company, it's Clean Machine Online. I encourage, uh, I named it that to encourage everybody to keep this incredible machine we're born into, the human body, as clean and healthy and not use animal products or drugs. And um, so you can do this, check us out at Clean Machine Online. And then you can check me out at uh, Jeff Palmer on Facebook. It's G-E-O-F-F, -F, the, uh, uh, the original spelling for Jeff uh, Palmer on Facebook. Uh, I'm at my friend limit, but definitely if, if you're interested, send me a, a like or follow. Um, I do uh, every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time in the United States, I do a podcast on all the latest research um, to, to show people what's going on in the scientific community there's so much i could spend hours here talking with you and thank you for giving me some time to be here i just love sharing good information that empowers people for me veganism is an empowerment movement it's about saying hey i can do something that i feel good about you know when i uh was listening to walter cronkite way back in the vietnam war and they were interviewing him they asked him a question what do you believe stopped the vietnam war was it the body bags coming home was it the protests in the street was it the academics calling for the end of the war was it the economy that was collapsing because of the weight of the war and he said something very powerful it was all of it and that's an important piece. When you're in a movement, remember that whatever you do well, apply that there because it all matters. People can hear it from lots of different ways, whether it's protesting on the street or helping a friend or sharing a study. All of it matters. Just do what you enjoy and do best and that's what you'll be best at. And that's the way you can help the movement because we need everyone, artists, athletes, doctors, everyone, because every different way can reach a different person. Together, we add up and that makes a movement. That does make a movement. All of the links you mentioned will be uh, shared in the show notes or in the description of the YouTube video. Everybody who wants to get in touch with you shawl please do so uh, i will remain in touch with you i really love your energy and i really really enjoyed having this conversation recorded for everybody listening um, if you want to be in touch with me i'll share all the links to my website my platforms my courses as well and that's it for today so i want to thank everybody for listening and bless you all stay vegan choose your zone of brilliance and Change the world in your own unique way, as Jeff just said so nicely. So thank you so much for being with us, Jeff. Thank you for having me.